Last time I did much to upgrade my colony and its infrastructure, namely this drawbridge here. In between videos I've also had the colonists build a warehouse and a university which I'll mention shortly. But back on the industry side of things, today I'm going to build a working crate mod sawmill split into two parts, an older section which will be the focus today, and a newer larger complex with a rail yard to be put into service once I have a logging town in the future. Wow, what do you know, the courier is doing something now that there's a warehouse instead of just wandering around complaining all day. I'm not quite sure what the courier is doing, but they seem to be doing something, they seem to be carrying stuff from random inventories, much to my surprise. I didn't actually think they were going to start delivering stuff. I thought it was broken for a little while, but I was wrong, luckily. In fact, they've been able to deliver lots of items, largely helping to construct this residence right here. Now the builder who builds right behind me in this house is able to live right next to it instead of living on the opposite side of the colony. That was really inefficient. I also have another corridor hut, because the bad thing I discovered is that the storage warehouse thing over here can't actually hire couriers on its own. It needs courier huts, and one hut per courier. I would need to spam a lot of huts everywhere if I wanted a lot of couriers, but these two people are just fine. They deliver all kinds of stuff here. Most importantly, I have a university. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is... Uh, that's the level one university. Uh-huh. I can go do some research, all the colonists, they can become communists, it's gonna be a great time. There's this research system, it's like a skill tree kind of thing. So there's all these upgrades and things you can do, and mainly what I want is to be able to unlock things like the hospitals so that they can stop being sick and or they can go cure themselves if they're sick or you can unlock the library uh it could also unlock the barracks i don't know maybe i should do the barracks first actually let me see if i can do that yeah let's do that research have begun to investigate tactic training so it's 30 real time minutes but if i can build barracks then i can get lots of guards instead of just one guard per guard tower given that i have a central place that i can puts items that the colonists will use, they can go into that warehouse there. Colonists from anywhere can request stuff that they might need. So it seems like it would be a great idea to be able to have a sawmill that can produce lots of different wood and wood products that I could maybe deliver to that sawmill. Or not the sawmill, to the, the, the uh, warehouse. There's a reason why the warehouse is going to be right next to a train station as well. I'm going to attempt to add on to this later some ways to automatically deliver items into it for the colonists. But let's make a sawmill. Sawmill has to go over here somewhere. Unfortunately, the land is super not... Yeah, it's kind of weird with this pond here, but I've got a plan. I've got some reference images. I know enough about what I'm going to be doing to get started. First thing is going to be to redirect some of this river here, especially because of how the sawmill is going to go along part of the river. Then I'm going to raise up this pond to be a higher water level and make a new river that I can stick some water wheels on for the old part of the sawmill. Then I'm going to have the train track from the factory run through part of the sawmill, plus some other ones in other spots. But let's go ahead and get building now. No way, my researcher made a breakthrough and now understand tactic training. That's so cool. I can make a barracks tower now. Not that I'm going to, but I could. I've been finding these waystones extremely useful for adding fast travel points everywhere. Like, I'm just going to add one right here to the sawmill so I can go back and forth to my house really quickly. I've got the layout of one of the more modern buildings down because I kind of need to get the layout for all the buildings, not just the older ones which I'll be making. This one here is where the train tracks are going to run through and there's going to be kind of like a train loading unloading system here for various resources. Especially there's going to be a space there that will automate tracks because that's part of what I want to do with the sawmill. I have all the iron I could ever want right over there, so why wouldn't I do this here? So this right here is going to be a train bridge that comes across this river. I'm like basically creating a river here. The rail yard is going to be somewhere over here. A lot of this is going to get covered up. Then next to it's going to be the big building that the rail yard is going to unload into. We're not going to get to that today other than the foundations, but that's where the upgraded sawmill eventually can go. Just when I wanted more barbarians. At least I'm not kind of an in-between part, so let's go head them off. Given that I took matters into my own hands when it came to expanding the colony borders, these barbarians will actually spawn a lot farther away than they would have otherwise. Problem is, the raids are getting a lot bigger, so it's a lot harder for me to handle completely on my own.
Hey, why does he have my engineer's goggles? I was missing those from the other video, and now this guy has them instead of a helmet? What the heck? Okay, I'm gonna need those back, bro. I can give you some iron gear instead. Nice. Okay, give me that back. <laughs> Wait, you have pirate leggings? Oh. I didn't even realize. Well, great. Also, he's able to use a diamond sword for some reason, which is nice. I'm not really sure why, but I won't complain. Oh yeah, I also got that new cape that they just put out, the 15-year cape, which I actually prefer because I had the Migrator one before, which I now regret getting since I was basically just a bribe to get you to move your account to Microsoft early, from what I understand, so I feel kind of dumb for having that now anyways. But when I can't have my Optifine cape, this thing looks a lot better. By the way, do any of you know if there's a way to get the Optifine cape with some kind of Forge add-on? Because there was a Fabric mod that just added the Optifine cape without Optifine, but I have yet to find one for Forge, so if any of you know of one, please let me know. Mm -hmm. I have to figure out how to make the train bridge like a wooden train bridge this time, not just a big gravel hill. Wow, that was way more difficult than I expected. I thought I'd be like, oh yeah, we're gonna go make a design super fast, it's gonna be super cool. But no, that's like the fourth or fifth design. The only problem is I don't really have any rails, uh, so I'm gonna activate this sawmill as soon as possible, like right now, I'm going to go get the water wheels. And the water wheels are going to be like the, the half redundant part. We're going to be able to have steam engines and like actual big power because I'm going to be making charcoal here as well because why not? It's going to be the wood factory. And there we go. There is our very large and unrealistic looking water wheel. <laughs> but it should provide a lot of auxiliary power to temporarily power some stuff like a track automator. Fun part for me though is I get to build an artificial river here. Not only that, I have to raise it up by quite a few blocks to have it be at the same height as the water wheel, which also goes for this pond. But I have a, a couple temporary water source blocks behind it, so looks like we're probably getting around 3,000 stress units. That's the second time somebody has drowned, and I don't understand why they're drowning. It's the weirdest thing. <laughs> okay. First thing I have to do is increase the rotation speed, which I'm just going to do with some gear ratios because it's going to get hidden. I don't mind doing that. And then apparently the shaft is going to come up straight through the floor here. And now I have the third iteration of my track automator. The best one and probably not the last one I'm going to have to make. This is another temporary thing. It's just a little more temporary than the last one. It's spinning the wrong way. Of course, it, it always does that. Let me try something. There's no way this is going to work, right? <laughs> oh, it kind of does actually. It does, it's it's a little bit more automated than what I'm used to. I may want to build with this stuff as well, so that's part of why I got so much extra. Okie dokie, we put the slabs in here, we need more slabs. Nuggets in there, nuggets in there, more nuggets. And that is our, why is our cogwheel? There's our wide dark oak tracks, that is quite simple. And quite fun to watch actually, let's watch this for a sec. Remind me to never again build a train bridge like this. This was a terrible decision. Terrible in the sense that it is very time consuming to build. Not terrible in the way it looks. I think it actually looks pretty cool though. Although trying to make this curve is just a little bit cursed. Oh, and if I sound weird, it's because I'm in a hotel right now, just kind of like old times, but we'll have to see. Maybe I'll re-record that if it is. I have foundations here for all the buildings I want in this complex. And then, I mean, maybe there'll be more than I need after I build more. Right over here is where the old sawmill is going to go, the older style buildings, mainly meaning it's not going to have sheet metal, it's going to have bricks. And that's what I'm going to be building today, mostly. 
One thing I definitely will be doing, though, is making the power generation very important, especially because then we'll get our smokestacks, which, you know, we gotta have those. Although smokestacks feel slightly disingenuous without a pollution mod. I wonder if that mod is updated for this version. I don't, I don't, I don't want to do that to myself, <laughs> at least not right now. There's darn raiders coming. Oh no, <laughs> not the darn raiders. Oh, wait, what? These are, these are just barbarians. I thought these were gonna be like cool bandits or something. What the heck? Why are they so fast now? They used to be slow and lame and they've been slowly upgrading. Well, I wasn't gonna start recording right this second because I'm still trying to build the inside of this building here, but hey, the good excuse, I guess some barbarians that were not cowboys, very sad. I have these two separate buildings which are meant to be the older style, mainly meaning they don't have any sheet metal and they have more brick and more wood. But that's about to change because I'm about to bring iron from the factory to turn into sheet metal and lots of other stuff. But if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna need more power, so I'm going to redirect the water wheel power to several pumping locations for boilers that we need to make. And they're probably over here going to power a uh, charcoal automation thing. I should be able to fit some lava fans in here to make charcoal automatically. And I have some ideas of how to move these items around. Yeah, the first thing I'm going to do is actually bring iron over from the factory. And then I'm going to set up the charcoal production right here. One nice thing that finally happened, which I threatened would happen earlier in the series, was that the iron farm shut off because it filled up an entire storage drawer. It will actually turn back on very soon because I'm going to be taking a bunch of iron out here. Anyways, this is where it gets really tricky and annoying because making belts turn corners in small spaces is never fun, and I have to get it all the way over to that platform. Oh, of course, it's spinning the wrong way. Of course. Good, I can get here with only two belts. That's better than I expected. I just have to connect them somehow and then decorate it a little bit so it doesn't look completely terrible. Very nice. What do we think? There I, there I go. That looks good, actually. I'm happy with that. It's fairly unobtrusive, and it will also get the job done, meaning it's going to bring iron over here. So what do I want to do with this iron? Well, it needs to get turned into iron plates, iron nuggets, and industrial iron, probably, among other things. The nuggets are going to be used for the rails, and then some of the other stuff is decorative or for sheet metal. So the nuggets are extremely easy because it just needs one crafter because it's just one step to turn it into the nuggets. The plates are going to be a little bit more difficult though because I have to run them through a press and then store them and then turn them into sheet metal. Oh good, it looks like I can use a mechanical arm to fill these crafters with stuff. I was getting concerned. Not that I have any mechanical arms, I will have to go over that. I'm going to set up my first boiler right here on the other side of the track so that I can start turning on some of the machines across the way. Just gotta get my power over here from the water wheel. Oh, perfect. Nice, That's like, that worked out perfectly. In order to safely transmit power across this area, I'm gonna have to bring it up by quite a few blocks because there will be big trains that go through here eventually. Boom, get that metal press. So let's see if this is gonna work now. Yes, it stops, that's how it's supposed to work. Couple small cog, oh, literally one cog wheel. And look, it makes the nuggets, and then it just gets stuck. Uh, shoot, there we go. I'm going to solve all my problems with mechanical arms. Hopefully. Maybe I'm being optimistic. No, I don't think I am. I think they're pretty cool. So, I'm going to use the arm not only to load the crafters to make sheet metal, but also to load a blaze burner in order to create the industrial iron blocks. So, can this be... Is this... Please tell me that is... Oh, no. <laughs> Darn it. Darn it. No, you can't take stuff directly out of storage drawers. That's really sad. Oh, you... Gosh darn it, why can't you put it in and out of chests? This are so stupid. And we are overstressed. Oof. Oof. I have a solution to this problem. Watch this. 
Now what is it doing? 16,000 stress units. Here we go. Is it going to work? Is it putting the right stuff in the right spot? Oh, it looks like it is. Not very fast though. Also, I assume if I put something in here, then it would probably... Oh no, <laughs> that's not good. How do I tell it not to do that? It put the stupid log... Uh-oh. Oh no. <laughs> I had no idea you could combine crafter spots. That means this arm is now not needed very much other than for the blaze burner. What I mean to say more eloquently is if you go to the back of this, normally it would only put into that one crafter thing, but if you go back here, you can join the inventories of them together. And so now it's all connected and it will make the 2x2 recipe. Well, isn't that convenient? <laughs> I wish I had known that a lot sooner. Like, I don't know, last year, unironically. I totally didn't burn down part of my building while making this down here. I can't I can't imagine why that might have happened. It definitely doesn't have anything to do with the lava. But this is my charcoal maker. It will make the charcoal. You can see the charcoal is right there. That's all the evidence we need. Uh, if you want to actually see it in action, I can put some stuff in here. And it sends the logs out and they just get turned into charcoal. So this is going to be the fuel source for the other parts of the, the sawmill, the factory, whatever is going to be over there. And the way I'm going to get the items there is actually going to be rather novel. Instead of using belts, I am going to use storage drawer things. I'm going to use these drawer trims, which I have discovered you can use almost as like a line of, of uh, item transfer. It's kind of interesting. I'll try to explain it. And somehow I've managed to make this line up perfectly with where I want the stuff to go. That doesn't usually happen. This go into a drawer controller slave, which is going to go into a drawer controller, which is then going to go into a storage drawer itself. So if I were to put stuff down there, there are things here now, but the cool thing is if I were to, to connect this with oak trims, which are not storage drawers, they're something different, and then I take another slave at the end and I put a hopper, no, that is not where the hopper goes. If I take a hopper under it or something else, it'll extract the charcoal from here or whatever items are in there. So all I have to do is make a big line of oak trim as in block form. And instead of conveyor belts, I just get to place blocks down. And boom, controller slave. And I chuck this charcoal in here. It should immediately go over to this boiler that I just made. Yeah, it did. You can see the arm is picking it up and I, it's going to stick it into that blaze burner there. And boom, we now are making 16,000 stress units. That is what I'm talking about. And I'm going to do that as well over in this area, in this factory, because I need charcoal both for this boiler and I need it for that blaze burner down there. And you know <laughs> what I could do? I have a lot of these trims. I could dig a tunnel under the under the river from my tree farm. Oops, I could transport wood over to the input here, which would be a good solution until I can set up the rail yard and have it be more realistic. And that's exactly what I just did. It took forever and I had to make quite a few different systems down here, but now it is dragging all those logs underneath the river over to my sawmill. I even added another system to drag charcoal all the way over to the second boiler and that blaze burner. But now let's go work on the sawmill part of the sawmill. We're gonna make this a functioning sawmill. It's not actually clickbaited. It's not just belts. Power is up and running. Over to here. Over to a deployer. And hmm, I wonder what the deployer will be used for. Well, I'm gonna show you very soon. I'm gonna put a... No. Well, that's kind of similar. I'm gonna put a normal piston there. And right here, I'm going to put a mechanical drill. Right here is going to be a mechanical saw. Right here, I need to put an observer with a redstone link. And then I'm going to connect it over to this piston. Nice. Time to see if this works. So basically I'm gonna put some blocks here. And then if I put a block right there, then it moves it forward and it puts another block down and mines it. And it continuously moves this forward. Then that should go straight into here and it stores. Yeah, this went really fast then it stores these stripped logs. So I'm only gonna store the three that I've automated right now. We're missing birch, I don't have it on me, but it's on the way, kind of. But essentially you can actually see it <laughs> breaking. Like this is redundant, obviously, but it just looks cool. I present the extremely cluttered but functioning 
Sawmill. Behind me. Everything is working as intended as far as I know for now. Not that it's been running for very long. The wood is getting turned into the stripped wood and then of course the planks. It's still only doing oak wood and it probably will only be doing oak wood for quite a long time because there's tens of thousands of oak lugs. Anyways, it's turning into planks. These planks are going here. Uh, I still have to put some more of these here, but these planks are getting turned into sticks and also getting turned into uh, framed blocks. All that made possible by these mechanical arms here, which make it so that I don't actually have to try to do crazy stuff to input the different items into the right slots. These arms just put them where they need to go. One of them handles the sticks, one of them handles the planks, and then, of course, we get our storage drawer of 120 framed cubes. Oh yeah, and I just ran another one of those oak trim lines up through the floor here to drop the logs off at the, uh, at the deployer for the log cutter. Yeah. But that's what we're gonna have to call it for today. I'm glad that we got this iron stuff done. We got the industrial iron being made. We got the nuggets and of course we got the sheet metal and the sheets. Then we have even charcoal automated. And then we have a nice compact sawmill which will work for a while until I can upscale when I have a big rail yard over here and can do a lot more, a lot faster. But if you enjoyed, make sure to drop a like and hit that subscribe button down below. I've been Steve. thanks for watching. Hope you have a good rest of your day and I'll see you next time. <laughs>